and sound. And the broadcast has gone. We're broadcasting right now. So we're going to do a quick welcome to everybody. Welcome to what, hello everybody. Welcome to what's going to be our first collaboration between SIGML, <laughs> SIGVE, and ISTE. And so what we're doing today is we are definitely going transmedia. So while we're doing this in Second Life, we'll also be broadcasting over Google Hangout, and we'll be having a lot of fun with that. And what we're going to do is um, for everybody, what Abacus has done is he's gone ahead and he's gone ahead and put the um, link up so that you guys, if you cannot see it on the screen, that's right above our Minecraft sign here, is you'll be able to go ahead and click on the YouTube straight from chat. And what, what we're doing is, since we're doing that live broadcast, we're going to actually be doing the screen share over YouTube Hangout. So everybody, if you'd either go to that link or if you'll watch and you'll go ahead and watch on the screen. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So go ahead and everybody start clicking. So we're doing mobile Minecraft and more. And mobile Minecraft and more is brought to you, like we said, it's a great collaboration between ISTE SIGML the Virginia Society for Technology and Education, and yay, and thank you so much for VISTI, because that's exactly where we are today. Today we are at, on VISTI Island in Second Life doing this. And then also SIGVE, and that is SIG Virtual Environments, and this is all part of ISTE. And the person who organized this all and got this together is Laura Briggs, and she's the person who just did the introduction in Second Life. So we have to send a big thank you to Laura Briggs. Yes, and the people in Second Life are applauding. Thank you. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> she, she definitely deserves that. And now I'm going to tell you just a teensy bit about the people who you're going to hear talking today. Now, the people you're going to hear talking today, me, um, <laughs> myself, Kay Novak, Melody Collier, and she's bringing some special guests, and then also Trish Cloud. So the thing about it is the reason we put our, our Twitter accounts up there is right after this is done, and we have to get off in time because exactly uh, we have exactly 57 minutes, and YouTube is going down for maintenance. So we're going to talk as fast as we possibly can. And, and I would say do not worry about this because we can come back and we can do this a second time. This will not be the only time that you'll see us. This is actually part of, part of a series that SIGML, SIGVE, and VISTI will be doing on mobile, Minecraft, and more. So 
what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about the real people who will be speaking. And those people are Melody Collier and Trish, <laughs> and Trish Clapp. Well, they are part of an Educators Guild, and this Educators Guild does gaming. And we're just showing you a quick little blow up um, from, we're showing you a quick little blow up here, and this is straight from um, this land in Minecraft. And hopefully, we will have the 10 and 12 year old architects of this land who will come and speak in just a little bit. So, without further ado, we're going to turn this over to Melody Collier and hopefully Mousy Moose and Giraffe 619 and get them talking about really Minecraft on mobile devices because that's really the focus of our set of our session today we're, we're all about Minecraft but what we really want to talk about is mobile in Minecraft so I'm gonna mute my mic so Melody can come in and start talking to us Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, I am joined by Mousy Moose and Giraffe619. Ladies, would you like to say hello? Hello. Hi. So, we all got together, and we thought that there were things that you should know about Minecraft and survival craft, and the girls helped in designing the slides, and they also have some great advice that they would like to give you as well. So, let the play begin. Next slide, please. Okay, so in Survival Craft and Minecraft both, there are two modes of play, survival and creative. In survival, you have to gather resource blocks and fight mobs off, but in creative, you have limitless resource blocks and no mobs or monsters to fight. Ladies, would you like to add anything? Um, I would for creative. Um, creative, you have, an, you could build anything with your limitless resource blocks, and pretty much anything you think of you can build. What about you, Giraffe? Um, okay, so nothing from Giraffe. Uh, next one. So movement in Minecraft is a little different. If you've been a gamer and you've played games before, you're used to using the arrow keys on your uh, computer, on your keypad. Well, that's similar to movement in um, mobile Minecraft on the iPad. Uh, in Minecraft, you use your directional buttons to move around the landscape. Jumping is your middle button. Uh, your left button, of course, moves, moves you left. Your right button moves you right. The top button moves you forwards, and the bottom button moves you backwards. Now, you can fly, but only in creative mode, and you have to hold down the jump and the forward button to go up. Ladies, anything you want to add? Uh, and, and whenever you're flying in creative mode, uh, to stop flying, you hit the middle button twice, and to go down, uh, you hold the jump button and the backwards button at the same time. Okay. Next slide, please. Do we have any questions so far? No? Okay, we'll keep going. Um, movement in survival craft is a little different uh, than it is in uh, mobile Minecraft. However, you can set it up so that you do have directional buttons. Uh, in survival craft, you use the touchpad bottom left and right on the iPad screen to navigate and to turn or adjust your camera view. So you tap the bottom left side once to jump uh, in for creative and that will enable you to fly because you can also fly in survival craft in creative mode. And the touch pads also like I said can be configured with the traditional um, directional buttons uh, similar to the ones that you used to on the keypad or in uh, mobile Minecraft. Ladies, anything to add? Um, I actually would love to add something. Okay, in survival craft it's just a teeny bit different than mobile Minecraft because the reason why it's a tiny bit different is you can, there are different kinds of animals in it and you can also like the thing to fly is a button. It, you can't um, you can't tap the thing twice to, to fly. There's a button for you to fly in creative mode. We have a question ladies and the question is on a Mac 
uh, what it happens if you don't have a middle button. Do we know what we use if we don't have a middle button? We use the what? The space, the space bar. space bar. You can use your space bar if you don't have a middle button. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, in mobile Minecraft, the buttons actually are on the screen. They're on the iPad. Um, the girls play, uh, we have two iPads, and they play together uh, on the iPad. They do multiplayer uh, for mobile Minecraft. Survival Craft doesn't have multiplayer yet, but uh, there has been some indication that in upcoming patches uh, that that will be included in Survival Craft as well. But uh, we play on the iPad. But if you're playing on your computer and you're playing Minecraft, uh, and you're playing on a Mac, you would use your space bar. Um, we'll get to some of the differences uh, about uh, survival craft and Minecraft uh, in our next few slides. But, ladies, um, the question is, what are some of the differences between Minecraft and survival craft? In, in survival craft and Minecraft, there are different ores you can get. In Minecraft, there's redstone ore and gold and diamond and all that. And in survival craft, there's a whole lot more. There's like there's emeralds and there's basalt and there's and bedrock and there's all kinds of stuff you can get in survival craft that you couldn't in Minecraft. Okay, so play is similar. It's just your resources uh, and um, the textures and Basically, um, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the lady said the textures and the look of the screen and things are, are different in um, Survival Craft. Next slide, please. So, movement in Survival Craft. Um, the sneak button is located midway up the right side of the iPad screen, and this actually is great to keep you from falling off things, because if you're not careful when you're moving around or you're walking, uh, it's really easy to fall off cliffs and fall into crevices or to get lost into uh, the nether or fall into the center and you uh, can't escape. The only way to escape is to can keep digging and die and come back to the spawn point. So, next slide. So using your resources to craft items in both Minecraft and Survival Craft is extremely important. Um, the first thing you have to do in both games is make a crafting table and a furnace in which to smelt ore. Um, and with these two items and the resources available, the possibilities are endless. Ladies, would you like to add something? Um, I would. Well, the, uh, the crafting is very different for them. Because in Minecraft, for a diamond sword, you just need one stick and two diamonds. For a diamond machete in Survival Craft, you need an iron machete with two diamonds. And it's very, it's very hard to craft in Survival Craft than Minecraft. So the crafting in Survival Craft is harder than it is in Minecraft. Yes. Uh, at first, whenever we started playing Survival Craft, uh, we looked everywhere trying to figure out how to craft things, and it turns out all you need to do is to uh, hold down the item you wish to use to craft something like she was saying uh, a diamond machete. You would need to hold down the stack of diamonds that you have until there's a, a thin red border around it and then you just tap wherever you want those diamonds to go and you can just pull it out and put it in your inventory. Next slide, please. And here are some screenshots from their iPads uh, showing you what it looks like uh, in your inventory, uh, in your chest. We have some wooden blocks. We have some uh, diamond swords, and we have some uh, pickaxes and some ore. And then over here, uh, this is your crafting. Um, what do you call that, ladies? Um. Oh, crafting table. This is where you'd make a crafting table. So this is your uh, where you would craft things. You make uh, your crafting table. You can make armor. You can make uh, tools, implements, and it lets you know what you need and how to make it. So next screen. Okay, so here are some observations of Mousy Moose and Giraffe 619, and I'll let them go through those with you. 
Okay, well, the first one is um, you can upload um, and pre made, you can upload pre made maps. One of them. And then um, the second one is Minecraft, you can group up or collaborate in the game with others like multiplayer. Survival Craft has a more diverse population of flora, fauna, and other kinds of life. Survival Craft overall textures and graphics are smoother. So would you say that you spend more time in Minecraft or more time in Survival Craft or kind of a mixture of both? Minecraft for me, definitely. Well, I I would spend more time with both. Both. And why do you why do you spend more time with both? Because um, I like the textures of Survival Craft and I like the I like the bright colors of Minecraft. Okay. Next slide. Now these are my observations as a parent who is also an educator. Watching my girls play um, in both games, Minecraft and Survival Craft, I've seen them collaborate uh, in ways that um, is unbelievable. Uh, and the things that they've come up with have thoroughly astounded me, uh, and, and I've been amazed at their creativity and um, just their thinking outside the box. Their patience, um, I've noticed that they're not only more patient uh, when trying to complete tasks, but also more patient with people around them uh, and other people that they have to work with. Perseverance, um, their perseverance, they don't give up. They may fail or it may be wrong or they may have to go back and redo it, but they don't get mad. Um, they do it. They keep going. They, um, they persevere through uh, a lot of obstacles. Their vocabulary, as uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, for their ages, is uh, large and um, it continues to grow by uh, day. Uh, their knowledge base uh, of the game and uh, things around them has grown and increased. Their understanding of technology, um, their willingness to try new things, and their compassion and understanding for others. These are all things that they need to be successful adults uh, in the real world. These are things that are, are going to make them viable for any job in life. And um, these are the things, just a few of the things that I as a parent have noticed uh, with their gameplay. Next slide. And here we have Mousy Moose and Giraffe 619 both playing Minecraft and playing Survival Craft. Ladies, would you like to make any closing remarks? Um, yes. Well, well, Minecraft and Survival Craft may be different in a lot of ways, but they both can be used for the same thing, and they're you know it's a per they're both perfect games for children and adults of all ages, and you know it's something everybody can have fun with. Okay, we have another question, ladies, and they're asking about uh, whether Pocket Edition Minecraft is iOS and Android. We have uh, the iOS version uh, for um, Minecraft. Um, is it on the Android, ladies? Do you know? Um, I'm not for sure. It, it can come on the iPod. But that's an iOS. Huh. Um, and yes, actually, the girls uh, do get to use Minecraft uh, in school, uh, especially this year. Uh, Giraffe 619 will be at our middle school, and they're implementing Minecraft EDU. And uh, one of her classes that she has for um, with uh, Miss Florence is one of the seventh grade teachers. Uh, she does a Minecraft uh, class in which they build and collaborate and research and then go back and build. Um, their, um, what they've researched in uh, Minecraft. And uh, Giraffe619 says that yes, it is also available on Android. So they're available on Android and iOS. Okay, Melody, Mousy Moose, and Giraffe, I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> and, and I'm just realizing, you know, how, how we're how we're making this so short, I'm sure we want to bring you guys back at some other time at some collaboration or something else like that. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like you as I'd like to um, quickly what we're going to be doing is we're going to now be switching over to Trish Cloud. And Trish Cloud is um, I sometimes call her the iPad lady 
<laughs> she'll talk about more what she does with Minecraft and mobile. Um, Trish Cloud has really, at least for us, has really been uh, an, in an inspiration when it comes to mobile and Minecraft. So I am going to turn it over to her and I'm going to mute myself. Okay, hello everybody. It's nice to be here. Thank you for asking me to come. Um, next slide. Um, what I'm going to talk about is what I did was I was fortunate enough a couple years ago that our PTA purchased two carts of iPads. So I had 60 iPads. And what I did was I started a Minecraft club because I'm in a large school district and we had to, I had to introduce it. And so what I did was last year I started a club and the spots filled up in two days. I had 60 students on iPads and mobile Minecraft and I had 30 on the desktop version. By the end of the year, I was running 70 to 80 students on Mondays after school playing Minecraft. This year, I've only got 30 desktops. I just found out that I may have access to iPads and to have Minecraft on, but my club filled up in three hours. So it is highly popular. I work in a K-5 environment. And one of the things that I'll talk about is how well mobile Minecraft is and what a great tool it is with the younger elementary group. Next slide. What we did is we did use Minecraft EDU and it is a modded version of Minecraft that really works well in the school system because the teacher has a lot of controls. Um, Chris, go ahead and slide to the next one. It's about half the cost of regular Minecraft and the students, you can set up and run a server off a computer so that you can have three, four, five, or ten kids all in the same server in the same game. And it just gives the teacher a lot of control. You can have some kids on survival and some on creative. And it just is a modded version. And that's what we've used so far. Um, next slide. But the big thing that got us started was Minecraft PE. And there is two versions of the Pocket Edition of Minecraft. There is a free version and there is a paid version. Next slide. The free version is a good version to start out with if it's something that you're just wanting to see if it'll work in your environment because it only um, you can do everything just about that you can do on the paid version except you can't save your worlds. And the paid version, you can save worlds and you can have multiple worlds. And one of the best pluses for Pocket Edition Minecraft is it's only $6.99 in the App Store. For those of you who are running mini iPads and you might be using the configurator, you can push all the apps through to your iPads through the configurator. However, Minecraft does not qualify for the volume discount. One thing I have discovered is that younger students are more comfortable with this version. I have found that with kindergarten, first graders particularly, they are very comfortable playing Minecraft with, um, this way, where they're intimidated by a desktop and don't like the mouse and the whole moving using two hands is very difficult for them. They are easily able to manipulate Steve and the environment by using an iPad and using the controls that Melody was demonstrating for you earlier. Um, they are more adventuresome. Um, I noticed that when I put younger students on a desktop, they seem to be more hesitant to venture out and do things where we put them on an iPad, they were just everywhere. 
So for younger students, the PE version is really, really good. And another thing you get with the PE version is you don't run into port issues. In larger school districts, sometimes they don't want to allow certain things through the filters or through the ports. And this is not an issue when you're playing um, the pocket edition of Minecraft. Next slide. This is a really cool thing that um, a friend of mine showed me. Her son got this math problem. And as you can see, it says the pattern of buildings is made with blocks. Building one is made from one block and building two. And he had to build on out on how many blocks are needed for this building in building 10. Now switch to the next slide. This is how he solved the problem and turned it into his teacher. He did it in Minecraft. And each one of those little signs that you see is what the problem would be solved answering each of the teacher's questions. This is a really good example of how Minecraft can be used in a manipulative way for math to demonstrate knowledge and, and communicating what they need to communicate. Yes, I would say, it, and it is mouse intimidation. <laughs> um, what we run into particularly with kindergartners and, um, and first graders is mouse intimidation because they set it down and they see this thing moving on the screen and it's I think there's a, a disconnect between what the hand is doing and what the eyes are seeing whereas if they're touching the screen they have immediate response and they know that the movement is matching what their hand is doing and this is one of the tougher things of teaching kindergartners and technology is getting them past the fear of the mice and that's 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 really that's really funny to hear, Trish. And I know you've talked about it before, but with so many mobile devices being around, they're more used to mobile devices, right, yes. than they are used to desktops. Exactly. And you come into our school, and little brothers and sisters will be sitting there with mom's iPhone or mobile device, and it's just going away doing whatever on it. Two-year-olds, three-year-olds. They have no problem with touch screens and devices, but you set a kindergartner down in front of a computer and frequently it's almost bigger than they are. So not only do they have this big screen staring down at them, then there's this whole keyboard with all these strange letters and numbers on it, and then there's this thing they have to move with their hand. and. For the younger kids, PE Minecraft is ideal. Um, next slide. This is a picture of a first grader from last year, and he is holding um, his house that he built in Minecraft. And he has, there is a picture that he made in there, and it's just one of the many things that he created, but this is probably one of the better Minecraft players in the school, that he's a first grader, but he does it really well with an iPad. Next slide. If any of you would like to look and see how we got it started, um, I've put the link to the wiki that we created when we started our Minecraft clubs and how we use Pocket Edition Minecraft and there's a whole lot of seeds and information about Pocket Edition in that wiki if any of you would like to look at it. And I think there may be one more. Nope. That's it then. <laughs> okay, but then um, basically, I did I did want to ask you because you talked about this a little bit, and we'll have we'll have Tanya and Chris start taking typing in any questions so that we can handle those questions from from Second Life. But the thing that we did want to ask you is Minecraft snuck into your school through mobile devices, didn't it? Yes, and. Um that was how um, I had a principal who 
was not averse to trying new things. Mm -hmm. And when we got the iPads, it was... I said, let's do this, and he said, sure, and I showed him how well that it worked, and he saw the popularity of it and saw the educational value in it, and we, as I worked with it more, I started finding ways that it aligned with Common Core, and that got more buy-in from teachers and um, from administration also and through the popularity of it on the iPads I was able to go ahead and get it on the desktops but yes um, using games on mobile devices is one of the, the ways that um, I use the Oregon Trail with fifth graders and I've used um, stack the states with all grades to work on geography knowledge and I've used a lot of different game apps that have educational value to get the more of the game mentality going in the schools yes okay and we do have some more questions Tanya is letting us know that the question is does your class serve as an elective club or supplement to curriculum? Um, we are still considered an after-school club. Um, if you wanted to use, if we wanted to use um, Minecraft as part of supplementing something I was teaching in technology or um, team teaching with one of the core teachers, yes we could do that, but as far as the time that the kids spend just on Minecraft. It is an after-school club. And Melody, did you want to jump in to talk about how you, you're you also using it? And Melody it? is saying that um, they will be using it to supplement. <laughs> yes, uh, we're going to be using it to supplement uh, curriculum at the middle school and we'll be working it down to the elementary. Uh, we are getting our, we're year behind uh, cloud, and so we're getting our servers. We just purchased uh, Minecraft EDU. Um, we do have one teacher who currently uses it on the iPad to uh, supplement in her curriculum, and uh, that would be at the middle school in the seventh grade. But um, the rest of the school will be uh, getting up and going on Minecraft EDU, and we'll be using it to supplement. It'll be during class time that the students will be using it. And um, now this is a question, it isn't specific to mobile, but uh, you're being asked, are the servers in the cloud or behind your firewall? With mobile Minecraft, um, with, well, with Minecraft on the iPads, um, they, you know, they work through Wi-Fi. Um, now, Minecraft EDU, you have options. You can rent a server or you can... a server up in your school but what will also work because it's um, it's that when you load the game onto multiple computers you can actually run a server off one computer so you can have one computer that's running the game but it's also being server to five additional computers um, um, there's not, not a really a problem with firewalls as long as you're keeping it local Okay, and then Grit has some more questions, and questions for Melody. What curriculum area is Minecraft being used in at your school, or will it be used in at your school? Uh, we're currently using it in science and social studies and math. We're also, um, I know in seventh grade, she does a writing component as well, so they have to write about, they have to do research, write about what they've researched, and then build it in Minecraft. Uh, but she's using that in conjunction with uh, like I said, science, social studies, and math. And um, what we had, um, I was going to say, what we had, Trish, is they're asking about the wiki address. Mm -hmm. So if you can put the wiki address just even here with us in Google Hangout, we'll, we'll cut and paste it into Second okay. Watch so that we can get it for some people. Um, in our school, um, what I did with the um, after 
And you, you just broke up a little bit, Cloud. Keep a writing component going. It, what I did with the um, Minecraft Club, I had grades K through 5, and with them, I would have, I created a wiki called Messages, um, a blog called Messages from the Mind. And <laughs> That's what, <very> they had, <laughs> what they were supposed to do is they could blog on the on the on the blog about what they were doing in the club, or they could um, do something like um, leave signs in the world they were creating, and they had to type things there about telling me what they were doing in their world. So they had to keep something going about what was going on in their world or what they were trying to create or just their, the story that went with what was going on in their world. And um, now um, Grit, Tanya is asking what kind of professional development did you provide for the teachers who are using Minecraft in the curriculum? Is that for me? I think that's for both of you guys, and then I'll chime in at the end. <laughs> okay. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll be working uh, with the teachers, offering them uh, professional development with the Region Service Center, and Miss Florence will uh, be leading a class, as well as we'll be having the girls do uh, some demonstrations of uh, using it uh, on the iPad and uh, also using it on the desktop, uh, since they do play it on their desktop here at home. Um, so we'll be um, doing demonstrations. Basically, it's uh, getting them in and uh, showing them uh, what to do and how much fun it is. And um, also, there are some um, uh, Minecraft lessons available. Um, I know through Maryam Malstrom and uh, Lucas Gillespie um, that uh, are available uh, in the Wow Schools website uh, for those teachers. And so we'll be pulling uh, some of that information as well. And Trish. How about you? Uh, pretty much with us, um, the teachers would come and they would hang out at the club and mm -hmm. watch what was going on and see if they got any ideas from that or they would ask me questions about it. Um, most of them, um, gaming is an entirely new animal to the majority of the teachers at my school. So they're... Um, they kind of view me with a <laughs> with a, a humor of, like <laughs> <laughs> with with a benign eye of humor because they think that um, I'm kind of amusing, but um, they'd see the passion and the engagement that I that the kids get when they see that me when they see what's going on when you mm -hmm. just say the word Minecraft. And so they know that there's something there for them to tap into, and so it is more of um, them coming to me and saying, "Okay, how can I use this, or how what can I do with this?" Okay, and th and then here's my plug, and Laura, I'd say you jump in with ideas if, if you feel like it at the end. Um, we're doing it through, we're doing Minecraft through SigVe this year. <laughs> We're having monthly office hours um, to basically discuss Minecraft, so once a month. And then we're doing an open house on a shared Minecraft server. So that's how we're doing prof professional development. And this is... Um, and this is Sig v and this is Sig v for Sig VE. And then what I'd like to show you real quickly is um, our educators guild, <laughs> inevitable betrayal, which translates stuff to be inevitable instructors. <laughs> um, basically, what they're doing is they're going ahead and um, we're helping write up about Minecraft. Um, we contracted with Mousy Moose and Giraffe <laughs> 619 to build to basically build our site and so that out, even outside school districts and things like that there are some that there's some professional Minecraft development that's happening and like I said we're doing it with SIGVE and also um, inevitable instructors so just so I wanted to let you guys know about that now Laura did you want to jump in with any ideas or thoughts that you've been having
And if not, that's okay because it looks like we have another question. And the question is, are there plans to extend Minecraft to the regular school day? And the question's for Trish. Um, right now, I don't, as far as it being um, the way that I use it now as a school club is where there's like a Minecraft class, no. But um, as I'm working with, particularly with fifth grade, I'm introducing 3D Game Lab into fifth grade. And um, if there was a fifth grade teacher who wanted to explore something in Minecraft, then I would see if my principal would allow it. I have a new principal this year, so <laughs> we're going to have to see how he's going to get with get in the groove with Minecraft. So <laughs> I've already gotten 3D Game Lab by him, so we're just going to have to see what I can get get accomplished. But there are many ways that you could use it, particularly with what they're using in fifth grade. But as it coming into the school into the regular school day right now with us? No, I'm only hearing of it being used as after school clubs in our district. And Tanya is asking, any plans to work across state lines on this project? And this question is for both Trish and Melody. Well, our principal is very much about um, being more global. And mm -hmm. so um, I'd like that could be could be something that would be really cool is if we could connect two schools together and do something like that. But, oh, yeah. But, you know, it would just be finding the school who was of the similar mindset and the right age because I've got elementary and other people are doing middle and so. <laughs> and, and Tanya suggested Minecraft pen pals. But yeah, I can see this being so much better than Skype. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we, uh, we last year, um, we do, with our adva advanced academic classes, we do um, a video uh, conferencing. Um, it's a competition, actually, uh, here in the state of Texas. And um, lots of groups uh, participate. Uh, they create a video broadcast, and then they share it around the world with uh, other elementaries or middle schools of similar demographics. Um, last year we broadcast to Scotland and Pennsylvania and um, North Carolina. Uh, so yeah, we're, we would be open to doing anything. Uh, we love collaboration. And what question we have now is what advice can you give someone just starting out and what are the greatest challenges? Um, I can I'll start out because I can speak from the, the low man on the totem pole kind of, but Melody's more administrator. She just says do it and they do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know what admin administration <laughs> life is then. No, I'm only teasing. Go ahead, Trish. But, um, first thing you need to do, I, you know, I could tell just because last year my daughter was a fifth grader and I knew how popular Minecraft was. My biggest goal was just to get some sort of gaming started in the school and um, get approval from your principal first and then it's easy because Minecraft the EDU it is about half the price of regular Minecraft and PE Minecraft is only $6.99 and it's easy to buy it to get it on the devices that's not the problem. I don't think there are much, there's there's not a whole lot that's going to hold you back from getting started because it is such a hugely popular game. It's kind of like um, shooting fish in a barrel. It is, um, if you can get approval from your district to do it, you should have no trouble because the very fact that there has been so much written about it it's already been pretty well proven that it it can be a very valuable learning tool and one of the greatest things that I remember seeing is 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 when I would have 60 70 kids in a classroom and it was not a big classroom and it was hot and they were not noisy they were not unruly they were in little clumps together they were just in little groups and they would all be talking and comparing and sharing and creating and just getting along incredibly well and just so engrossed in what they were doing and having so much fun that not 
leveraging that for education is an incredible waste or missed opportunity. So, um, the, and I honestly, the biggest challenge I have and the one I'm having right now is appeasing unhappy parents when I don't have enough space for their child. Oh, gosh. Okay, and the thing of it is, I'm just going to say a little shout out to our 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 SIGV, our virtual environment, and our VISTI online people, because the thing of it is, a lot of us as teachers and educators know the power of the creative mode, because we know it in Second Life, we know it in Open Sim, we've seen it in we've seen it in Unity, and Minecraft might very be well be that gateway to get it into your school. And and bringing the parents and bringing the parents along, so I, I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> I just, I was going to say in my experience, um, the hardest people to convince have been teachers and admin. Uh, getting teachers yeah. to buy in to something that uh, one they're not familiar with or two makes them slightly uncomfortable um, has really been the hardest. And then um, admin even uh, admin who uh, don't game or participate. Um, they're afraid of you know doing something that you know um, others might see as um, out of the box or you know kind of out there or um, that those to me have been the hardest. Parents are not. Parents instantly are oh I want my child in that oh I you know my child loves that or you know they instantly buy in uh, for something that uh, is going to benefit their child and their child enjoys. And then the question was. Um, if you use uh, the mobile, do you have to buy a regular account? Um, you have to have a, uh, an account uh, to be able to use the the mobile, right? No, no, no. The multiplayer realms. Multiplayer realms, you do. Which is working. Which is not working currently on it's the. So. Yeah. And I mean, because yeah. I know, because I've I've seen um, just just getting together the professional development is that. If people don't want to buy accounts, but they have, I, <laughs> if, they, if they don't want to buy accounts, I can get them on a desktop. I can get teachers on a desktop, but it's sing, it's single player, and and then they, you know, they just basically are are making are making their world. But even that, I mean, for me, showing teachers that is something, right? And um, as far as bandwidth goes, um, I've never experienced any problems with that. And um, you know, if you're on Minecraft EDU, we're done. We're we're doing that through. We're um, hardwired in to the internet with the desktops. But as far as the um, iPads go, we've never had any issues with um, not get gaining connectivity or um, with um, yeah. And you okay. can use. The, I was just say you can use the Pocket Edition without having uh, a an account on mm -hmm. the desktop. Yes. Yes. That's right. Possible. You can, you don't have to have a desktop uh, subscription to be able to do the Pocket Edition. That was so, one of the questions. Yeah. So you can slowly immerse into Minecraft. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes. And, 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 um, and okay, what ahead. happened? What happened at our school is that we had many, many, many kids. I don't know how popular I was with parents at the end of the year or not now, that we had many, <laughs> many kids who had never played desktop Minecraft. And by the end of the school year, they had all moved from the iPads to the desktops and experienced the desktop Minecraft. And that was the biggest want off everybody's list as they were leaving the club last spring was, Mom, we've got to buy the desktop version. Mom, I've got to have the desktop version. So um, <laughs> I don't know how popular I was with parents then, but yeah, that's, then they, it's like the desktop, the, the pocket edition gets their feet wet, but then they mm -hmm. really want to get into the real meat of Minecraft, which is the desktop version. Okay, guys, we're going to start wrapping it up now. Um, I just I just have to ask you one quick question. Um, what do you guys do when a a five year old, a six year old, or an eight year old comes up to you and says, um, "Let me see your Minecraft world"? 
<laughs> well, you better have something on hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you better hand in that iPad. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's the thing that I would like to especially push out to all of our people who are who are already doing virtual environments. It is very much show me what you've built already. I'd like to see what you've built because because I know um, teachers where I am bring their kids over to sh to have me talk to them or as they're passing by my office and stuff like that and that and that's like the question that I continually get. Okay, we're going to be wrapping it up now because we just want to make sure that this renders in time. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to thank again. <laughs> it's the SIGML, Visti, SIGVE who have who made this collaboration and this mobile Minecraft and more. This is only our first series. We are planning on on doing four of them throughout 2013, 2014. And just a quick plug, SIGVE will be having its next open house in Minecraft on the Minecraft server on our Minecraft server on September 28th. And we are planning having a big Minecraft and more online event on December 6th and 7th. And that will be on the Minecraft server and also through Google Hangouts. And that's it. So um, we'd like to thank everyone. And we're ending now just so this can get rendered before YouTube goes. <laughs> Because now today, so thank you everyone very much. We are doing a tweet chat with SigML right after this, and um, so we're going to end this broadcast and say goodbye. So thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you, Giraffe Six One Nine, Mousy Moose, Melody, Trish, um, Tanya Martin, and Chris Lutz for handling the production, and especially Laura Briggs, who's it was her idea, this whole thing, and she worked so hard to get it together. So thank you guys very much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.